So I'll call to order this committee, the whole meeting of the Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores, and welcome everybody to the Council Chambers this evening. We're glad you're here. Uh, second item is disclosures of pecuniary interest, nature thereof. I'll ask any member if they have a pecuniary interest with anything that they would like to declare. Seeing none, of course, you can declare one any time if you need to. Next is the open forum, and there are three requested open forum uh, presentations, uh, one by Joy Coghill and another by Doug Ordwich, who are, which are on the master plan 2013 and proposal. That item is not on the agenda this evening, so those uh, open forums are out of order and will not be heard. The third one then is uh, on the RFP by Patricia Corrigan Frank, and uh, that's on the RFP, which is on the agenda. So if uh, Ms. Corrigan Frank would come up, uh, our def the open forums are three minutes in length, and uh, and the podium is yours, Ms. Corrigan Frank. Okay, I got it. Okay, I'll get right to the point. Um, on November 12, 2018, at the Port Elgin Beach Station, it was quoted, Mr. Smith said that uh, he had a, was attaching a diagram as a site for future development, and a request for proposal was, uh, was released publicly in February 2019. And this is the diagram that went with it. And in this diagram, it was very clear that it included the train station, the, the mini golf, and the accompanying maybe the flea market area. And since then, uh, the, as since that diagram was provided, things have changed drastically. Um, as the RFP, he's, in the RFP it said it was fairly open concept. It's expected that the town upon reviewing submission will invite some proponents to participate in further dialogue, which may include community consultation, may include Something of this major endeavor, this massive change to our beachfront, surely it shouldn't be a matter of it, may include community consultation. It absolutely should include, and that should have been a shall, not may. So here was the, here was the plan, and that's the basis that people submitted these RFPs. So according to Ms. White, one was received. The appendix that went with the RFP proposal was also in keeping with this. So maybe somebody that thought that they were going to be allowed to build all along the waterfront might have submitted a proposal. And then Ms. Jay Galuski in May, May 29, in her re staff report, suggested then that Mr. Uh, Danini be given and authorized a memorandum of understanding for Mr. Pierre Domenini, Pierre, to sign signify the advancement of negotiations for the Port Elgin waterfront. So she was suggesting that he, that he be given a memorandum of understanding, and there hadn't even been a survey yet. Hadn't even been completed, hadn't got any community input at all. Then we get, in July, it gets posted that we are allowed to do a survey. We're given two weeks for this community, the residents, the tourists, to have some input, two weeks. I noticed the new plan, we've got till September 30th to comment on the new plan for the five-year plan for the town, but we're given two weeks to talk about this, this bigger change for our beach. A question that I have that I was, I was trying to ask and we, we got cut short uh, was, um, Ms. White said that Mr. in September 9, 2019, in responding to what Mr. Mann is going to be talking about, was that Mr. Janini's proposal is currently in stage two of the process, which includes providing detailed designs. That's uh, three minutes, Ms. Corrigan Frank, if you could wrap it up. So have you received designs? Have you received? We haven't seen any. We've asked. We haven't seen them. And suddenly, this, this plan that was on, his, on your website for him... To, to show what his plans were, I filled in the details, and I photocopied it. And I'd like to know what the heck is going on. This plan was taken off of his website, his plan, his slideshow, that it was supposed to be presented to you on Wednesday afternoon. And suddenly, it's not there anymore. And it very clearly shows the big plan that he has for that beach. 
you need to think really carefully. Some something funny is going on here. Why was that suddenly We're coming up removed? on four minutes, Ms. Corrigan? Frank, and I thank have goodness to ask you. I managed to print it off before it was removed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So that moves us on to delegations, and we have three delegations this evening. And the first one uh, is uh, uh, presentations to two uh, outstanding uh, groups of young athletes in our community. And uh, I guess we're going to bring them in. Yes, so, the, so uh, we, ha we have the uh, Sogging Shores Mosquito Sting OBA 11 UD Ontario Baseball Champions, and we also have the Sogging Shores Life Saving Club Junior and Senior Waterfront Champions. So maybe... Uh, I see Lisa back there. Maybe we can uh, bring in. Uh, we we'll have to bring these teams in one at a time. There are a lot of. It's a lot of people. So maybe we'll bring in the baseball team uh, first here, and uh, we'll bring them to the front. We can uh, present them with their certificate and get a picture. They may have wandered off. We'll give them a sec. Okay. All right. Come on in, guys. Come on up to the front. Shores Mosquito Sting OBA Champions, sponsored by True North Restoration Solutions Incorporated. On behalf of the Town of Saugeen Shores, in recognition of outstanding achievement for having won the 11 UD Ontario Baseball Championship. How about a big round of applause for the Sting? So up next, we, uh, we have our Soggy Shores Life Saving Club Junior and Senior Waterfront Provincial Champions. So once, 
we get things shuffled around out there, they'll make their way in. Yeah. This is, this is about 50, 50 kids on this, uh, on the life-saving uh, team, so we may have to, we may have to blow out a wall or something here to yeah, let them in. Saugeen Shores, it gives me great pleasure to offer congratulations to the 56 Saugeen Shores Life Saving Club athletes who won the Junior and Senior Championship banners at the Ontario Waterfront Life Saving Championships August 12th to 14th in Saugeen Shores. Twelve athletes also traveled to Nova Scotia for the Canadian Surf Life Saving Championship in Halifax at the end of August, coming in second place behind Nova Scotia's team and the highest they have ever placed at a national surf competition. The 2019 team was coached by Cassidy Kasmer. How about a big round of applause for Saugeen Shores.
Okay, very good. Thank you all uh, very much for that. So that moves on now to our second delegation, uh, which is from Brad Scott, President and Joanne Robbins, Coordinator of 2019 Port Elgin Pumpkin Fest. Come on up, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. First off, I'd like to uh, just introduce my, some of my committee members over here to our left. Thank you guys for joining us this evening. I get the fun job. I get to talk about the good stuff, as always, and then I'll give the boring details to Joanne because she's really good at those. Who can believe we're 25 days, 14 hours, 13 minutes, and 34 seconds, according to my website, away from Port Elgin Pumpkin Fest 2019. Uh, it's crazy, as it is every year. This will be our third year downtown for our 33rd anniversary, so it's the third year since we've moved back downtown, and it's the 25th anniversary of the Cinderella Carriage Car Show. So it's been a long time. I've been doing this since I was 15. I just turned 40, so do the math. I've been coming back here every year since I left school. Um, we're excited again about all the stuff that's happening. This will be the second anniversary of the Practically Hip concert happening Saturday night in the parking lot behind the Queens Bar and Grill. Last year, we oversold our tickets by about 100, uh, so we're hoping to do the same number this year. Uh, tickets are going fast. They can get them online at our website, $15 in advance, and they'll be $20 at the door. Uh, what else do we have? We've got Tim the Puppet Tamers coming back this year on the entertainment stage. We're going to have our pajama party again in the, uh, in the way off at the church in the evening on Saturday night for all the little kids to come back and enjoy some, some puppet time and making some crafts and popcorn and things like that. Um, the entertainment stage is going to be running all weekend again. We've got some great bands lined up for that this year, lots of local bands. I don't have all their names, but I know we've got lots of local talent coming to play. Um, what else do we have going on, Joanne? Batman. Batman. Batman will be back. Return, Batman Returns. We do have our pumpkin carving going on again this year. We have our wood turners are coming back this year. Uh, this year we have inflatable bouncy castles outdoors so the kids can play on those. We're going to try and change up our hay bale maze this year. We're going to try and go for round bales and, and make like a climbing structure of some kind out of it. Um, so we've got lots of big stuff in store. We're hoping, rumors are out there, we're going to break 2,000 pounds this year in a pumpkin. Last year we hit 1,959 pounds, so we're not far off. The, uh, the rumors are out there. They're coming, and they're going to come here. So we're very excited to see it. With that, I'll hand off to Joanne to go over some of the details. Good evening, council, media, public, and friends. Um, in your package for your approval, the boring stuff, uh, are the road closures and bylaws, tra traffic flow maps. Um, those uh, have not changed since last year. Um, I've just come from um, my meeting with uh, police and police auxiliary. They will once again do our security for us so we can donate to their good cause um, and uh, help out the auxiliary. Um, there's also a detailed assistance uh, report there. I've gone over this with the town, and I, I have to say the town staff and managers probably are more knowledgeable in this than I am at this point. Um, they tell me when I've missed something, so they're, they're wonderful to work with. They believe in the event, and uh, without them, of course, it couldn't happen or it wouldn't be near as safe because I'd be out there at midnight putting up signs. So... Um, uh, I also wanted to, inside your package, you, of course, have a seed to practice. It would be lovely to bring the Silver Seed Award home. Um, uh, Al Barfoot is still holding it. <laughs> so uh, certainly practice with your seed. Join us at the opening ceremonies at uh, 10 a.m. Um, at the Missionary Church. And uh, I've also uh, invited Mike... Um, our police chief. So now between Ben and uh, Dave and Mike, we maybe have some height, uh, uh, <laughs> some good airflow with the height. I mean, we can always hope. You you were second twice. So anyway, Mike is invited, and I'm, I'm not sure 
what the answer was, but uh, we can all bug them to, to please show up. Um, something else I wanted to bring up is uh, the unsung heroes, um, and I'll be talking more about this in my radio interviews and things through the week. There's people that we... It's great when we get the new sponsor. Wendy's is on board. They're gonna they're gonna sponsor pumpkin carving, you know. And Connectrix is gonna sponsor, you know. All these new businesses are helping us out. Everybody's on board, but we forget people like uh, the Carsons, who have uh, for years and years supplied the forklift drivers, brought the forklifts, lifted those pumpkins, and for no real acknowledgement at all. The same for our judges, uh, the people that are behind the scenes doing all that work year after year. So I will speak more to that uh, throughout the coming weeks. Um, and I encourage everybody to go to pumpkinfest.org and look at our sponsor page and thank those people because without them, we could not do it. So I think that's all I had. And questions or? Sure, well, we'll ask members of the committee, are there any questions uh, for either Brad or uh, Joanne? I'll just uh, say uh, thanks once again to uh, you guys and to your entire team at uh, Pumpkin Fest for uh, putting the event on uh, again this year. It's always a huge success. Rain or shine, it's a big success, and it's going to shine, so it's going to be a huge success. Uh, I know, and we're going to get some very large pumpkins. I've always, I, uh, I always work on weighing pumpkins every year, and I'm always looking forward to being the guy to weigh the world record. That's what I, I don't know. That's my great dream in life. One of my many great dreams in life, and that, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a great event, uh, and I just encourage everybody in town to go to it and volunteer for it. Are there, is there, I assume there's still a need for volunteers? Absolutely, and uh, it should be up tomorrow. We've, we've got uh, a new fancy online way to volunteer as well as the sheets are still out at the high school. So we'll do both, and you'll get an email, and you'll get a reminder of when you should be there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, they go, they, so we're, we're practicing with some new newfangled things. They go to the Pumpkin Fest website then. If yes. some people are interested in volunteering, just pump. What is just go to Fest? volunteers and it'll be there. Pumpkinfest.org, is that right? Yeah. All right. So, uh, so yeah, make sure to volunteer if you have the time. But whatever you do, get there and it's going to be a great event. So okay. thank you guys and very I'm much. I'm hoping council will once again help us at the 50-50 table. Oh, very good. We'll definitely <laughs> be spit, spitting seeds. I'm sure everybody is all set to spit seeds, right? Yeah, looks like it. Looks like it. <laughs> all right. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. All right, that moves on then to uh, our final delegation, which is from John Mann. Mr. Mann. Um, before I begin, um, Joyce Cogill and the other person uh, were speaking to my, uh, my delegation and also the information report of this town. They should be given the, their three minutes, Mayor. The uh, Danini uh, request for proposal uh, is way beyond the request for proposal documents that uh, he was given. Um, uh, the request for document says uh, that Sogging Shores is requesting proposals from de developers, operators interested in developing a parcel of land located on the Port Elgin Main Beach. Page four, the description is, agreeing to a minimum 10-year lease with optional 10-year extensions, the successful partner will refurbish and modernize the look and function of the existing station building or build new at their expense. So that was the entire uh, request for a proposal. And then you had this uh, wonderful uh, diagram of it with a red line around just the station and the mini golf, nothing else. And uh, uh, and your Schedule A in the meeting for Wednesday uh, has just the station, uh, uh, train station, and mini golf as Schedule A for the Memorandum of, of Understanding. That was drafted in May 27, 2019. So it is still the only thing this council is approving at this time. And um, I was just given this uh, a few minutes ago. Um, a diagram of the uh, village that uh, Mr. Danini has provided. Well, 
uh, the uh, station and mini golf are just a minor, very minor part of this whole village. You weren't asking for a proposal for a, a village. You were asking for one building, one. And the building was the station. He could refurbish it or he could knock it down and do it new. You have an obligation, a fiduciary duty and obligation to all citizens of this town to retender this. And uh, if it's going to be for the whole beach, the entire beach, like this, uh, like this proposal is, you've got to retender it. And uh, uh, I don't know if any, you know, uh, the financial people would certainly want to know it was tendered properly. And any uh, future problems, uh, insurance and everything else, they want to know it's done properly. This was not done properly. Um, and, um, uh, and then we have the bids and tenders. Um, we have a website for bids and tenders. Well, I, uh, I don't know how to do it, but my bride, Ms. Ashby, knows how, and we've been following it ever since. But the bids uh, submitted uh, should have been submitted by March 12, 2019. And uh, as of uh, September 4, uh, 2019, the uh, website of the town said no bids, no bids submitted. How is that possible? This is the most important thing that's ever happened in uh, Sogging Shores. So when it was brought to the attention at the public meeting on, on September 3rd, nothing was done on September 4. But on September 5, after I did my delegation and filed it, uh, then the town uh, uh, started looking at it and, and now put the uh, bid submitted. Oh, Pierre Danini shows up. Amazing. Uh, so now a bid is done. Um, but uh, I got an email from the town, uh, and, the t and the email from the town says, um, Mr. Denise's pro proposal was received by the deadline and deemed a compliant proposal. The proposal was received at 12 noon on March 12th. The proposal was opened by two staff members during a public opening, during a public opening held at 2 p.m. on March 12th in the council chambers. The bids and tenders website of Sogging Shores says, public opening, no. Now that had to be done after March 12. No had to be put in there after March 12. No is not correct if he submitted this on March 12. And how do I know that? Because I've got another proposal of the, uh, regarding the uh, delegation of uh, the Coliseum in Southampton where it said, yes, it, there was a public opening. And it was a retender because the uh, tender had been altered. This uh, hasn't been altered yet, so it still relates to the so, uh, station and the mini golf. Uh, so it absolutely, um, there's something, something wrong here. Whoever put no in there had to know it was yes or no. And by putting it no, that's what I'm, I'm going to live with. And uh, we have to rely on this. And then they show me a disclaimer. They, they point me to a disclaimer. And the disclaimer says, hey, if, um, um, if you are dissatisfied with any portion of this website or with any of these terms of use, your sole and exclusive remedy is to discontinue using this website. Well, hell, I am uh, very disappointed with it. And social media, I don't know anything about, but Ms. Ashby does. And, and she gets it for me. But uh, uh, to say that... Uh, Social media is the way to, citizens can get information, and you just say, hey, too bad, citizens, uh, you know, good luck. Uh, it's just an atrocity. And I went and said, well, give me the file. I went there the fifth. Give me a, the file. Oh, we don't keep a file anymore. They, you don't even keep a computer file on this. I can't look at anything. Um, and this is the greatest thing. Welcome to the Town of Sogging Shores Bid Opportunities website. And the... And the um, Note there is, only documents found on Sogging Shores' website are to be considered, quote, official, end quote. The town of Sogging Shores accepts no responsibility for the accuracy of information found on other websites. The onus is on the bidder to check this site to verify they have received all relevant bid information. And on, the, on our website, the Sogging Shores website, hey, good luck. We don't know if it's good or not. And you require the participants to rely on it. So... 
uh, our CAO, his only response to my point that this needs a new tender is, he says, well, there's a provision in the R R P RFP saying, as indicated, quote, as indicated above, if a new building is desired, the location could be moved to be closer to the water and the existing parking is moved closer to the street. Well, that's called an existing building. That's the station. That's what you're referring to, the train station. If a new uh, building is desired, then it can move a little closer to the water. But the station is gone because you didn't refurbish it. That's the RFP. And it's not this grand village that you're talking about. Just craziness. So you've got to retender it. But can you retender? No, because this council and this uh, mayor have decided the only thing we're concerned about is that damn train station. And we want a, a, a restaurant and bar. But instead, Danini, you're privatizing the beach. And thank God for Danini for privatizing the beach, you say, because it wasn't your idea. We elected you people to run our beach. It's a public beach. Now it's privatized, and Danini's running the show. He says, we're going to have a, a hall here, a, a rink here, a, a boutique uh, uh, um, stores, and, and, and a big restaurant in a town square. And, and, and this... And this thing, um, well, Ms. Frank showed it before, uh, shows this huge extravaganza that was not shown at the public meeting and was deleted, as I understand it, today. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, this deserves an, a, a public inquiry, a judicial inquiry, to something that really stinks. And you've got to retender because corruption is the big thing here. Is it a good, a good old boys club? Or do you have a, a, a fair... Mr. Mann, I'd ask you not to impugn the integrity of members of the administration. I'd ask I'm just, you not, I'm just ask you not generally, to, that's why I'd ask you not to make accusations like corruption, not, Mr. I'm, Mann. I'm, I'm saying that's why the purpose of a retender is required, because you want to avoid that. I'm not saying people did it. I'm saying you want to avoid that. Um, and um, uh, the other uh, point is... Um, Oh, the 50 years. All, all of a sudden, from 10 years, we're going to do a 50 year. Well, no one bid on that. A, a lot of people might want to bid on 50 years and, and a, a, a village rather than bidding on a train station that is most certainly going to litigation because this proposal, RFP, was supposed to be awarded April 8, 2019. April 9, it wasn't awarded by then, but April 9, 2019, you were uh, you sent a lawyer through uh, a, a letter through your lawyers to Andy Hess, the train guy, saying get out of town because you can't accept what's been re uh, the RFP that's been presented. And so uh, obviously there's some uh, the train station's still there. So you're looking at litigation for that. So that's why 22 people that asked for the package probably said uh, it looks too iffy. But if you have this grand scale. Uh, uh, village. Hey, I it's might uh, ten minutes, Mr. Mann. I'd ask you to wrap it up, please. Um, so I am. Uh, hold on a second. This is what old age does to you. Can't can't uh, figure out what you're doing. Um, but I, I emphasize the CAO only mentions moving the the one building, one building closer to the water. He doesn't say this grand thing. He uh, uh, complies with this RFP. It doesn't comply. So he doesn't have any answer for anything that I've said tonight. And it's on the information report uh, uh, today. Um, it, well, we're coming up on it, 11 it, minutes, Mr. Mann. I, I think we're going to have to end it there. Thank well, you. But, but you, you, they filed an information report. That does, uh, uh, I should get more time because no, I've never seen an get information time. report. Ten minutes. Delegations are 10 minutes in length, Mr. Mann. And I understand so that, your delegation the information report is over. Thank you, Mr. Mann. Thank you, Mr. Mann. Thank you, Mr. Mann. That's, we're well past the allotted time. Thank you very much. Are there questions or comments from members of the committee? Doesn't look like any. Thank you very much. All right, that moves us then on to report of municipal officers and committees. And item 7.4, community services, parks and recreation. There's a staff report on the canteen lease, and we'll turn it over to the uh, manager of recreation. Am I right about that? I hate to get your title wrong, Lisa. 
that's okay. <laughs> Lisa Billing. Lisa. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, uh, staff were notified in July 2019 that the previous operators of the canteens at the Plex and Coliseum uh, would not be renewing their agreement. Uh, at that time, a request for proposal was issued, and there we had two bid takers and one submitted bid. Tonight's recommendation for a one-year agreement will allow the proposed operators to assess operations, test new offerings and specials, and gain an understanding of the needs of the user groups as well as the public. The proposed operators are aware of the key concerns with regards to consistent hours and variety of offerings. A menu that has been included as part of the agreement and will be expanded on throughout the season. I believe the highlights of this agreement include the operator's desire to facilitate a meeting with our user groups um, should this agreement uh, be approved uh, to really gain an understanding of what they're looking for, their schedules, and how they can work together. Um, we also included monthly meetings for the first three months of the agreement to ensure that we are on the same page, uh, maintain those open lines of communication between staff and the operators. They have previous experience in food services as well as experience operating as the food provider uh, in the Hawk's Nest in Rotary Hall with the Wasagi Shores Winterhawks. They also have a desire to seek new opportunities for business, uh, for example, opening at lunch here at the Plex um, perhaps one or two days a week um, based on need at this end of town with limited um, options in terms of hot lunch. And they have a commitment to post and follow their hours of operation as well as a commitment to try new offerings once they've set up uh, in the spaces. Communication will be integral to the success of this agreement and we've, tried, I've, we've included parameters um, within the agreement to support two-way communication. I would also encourage members of council as well as our user groups to bring forward any concerns, comments, um, or considerations as soon as they arise uh, in conversations with the propose, uh, proposed operators. Um, they are definitely keen to work on whatever issues or, or concerns may come up and to address them as quickly as we possibly can. Um, and that's why we're presenting this as a one-year agreement. Okay, thank you, Lisa. I'll read the recommendation, then we can take questions or comments from members of the committee. It's recommended that Council pass a bylaw to authorize a one-year lease agreement between the Town of Saugeen Shores and Peggy Coffee for the management and operation of concession services at the Saugeen Shores Community Complex and the Southampton Coliseum. Questions or comments from members of the committee? I'll start with the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. So if we approve this tonight, this will come back at the regular meeting for approval, or is there any way we can fast-track this tonight in order to get the canteens up and open as we have vast and huge amounts of people in the arena every night with minor hockey tryouts. I mean, uh, the staff can comment as to whether that's, uh, we'll move up, but certainly council has the ability if we, if the recommendation passes, uh, when we come around to regular council, uh, council can introduce the recommendation uh, as an amendment uh, to the regular council agenda and has the authority to amend its agenda and pass this in regular council. I don't know, is there comments from staff as to whether that's uh, an advisable thing for council to do? I, in our conversations that we've had, I think they'd rather us wait. Um, if it's a wish, we can certainly speak to them, but we, to time limits in right now would make that challenging. Comments from members? Uh, Councilor Grace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Lisa, I just have a couple of questions. Um, so, what is going to be the policy on people bringing in their own food and drink into the facilities? So we have no, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, we have no formal policy that prohibits uh, people bringing in their own food and drink. We would expect that um, with consistent operations and the enhanced communications that we're anticipating with this agreement, uh, that the community would be able to support the canteen services because they understand that they, when they're here, when they're open, and what they can anticipate. Okay, thank you. And um, Clause 43 talks about uh, oil waste disposal being the sole responsibility of the operator. Um, has staff offered guidance to the proposed operators to make sure they know how to do this correctly? Uh, we have not offered guidance, uh, but we have made the operators aware of that clause, and we anticipate with their um, experience in the food industry that that would be handled in a safe and proper manner. Further comments? The Vice Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just a quick comment and a question. First of all, uh, congratulations on finding a, an operator. I, I at one point wondered whether we would find an operator or not. There's, there are long hours, and I'm not sure there's a whole 
all the money to be made here. It's a great service, though. So, uh, you know, hats off to staff for was it just the one bid, correct? He just it was just the one through you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. So we're fortunate. The question I have really is around equipment. Um, the deep fryer, the flat top grill, the exhaust hoods, fire suppression, um, really fairly expensive equipment. Is it original equipment from when the plex opened or has that been replaced in the last five, ten years? Jane, do you know? Is that original equipment? Um, I honestly can't say. I suspect throughout the course of the few years when equipment broke down, it was replaced, but not that, not yeah. through my knowledge. I would suspect it's original, most of it. Yeah, that's the only question I had, just when it, when it was due for replacement, but that's fine. Okay, further uh, questions or comments from committee members? Just, uh, this is an excellent uh, news story. It's a great opportunity to, uh, well, it's great to have somebody operate these uh, facilities because we need them to operate. I think that's a, a benefit to the Plex and the Coliseum. And it's also a smart way to organize it on the one-year trial basis, uh, both for us and for them, to see whether that's something that'll work uh, for both parties. So it's, uh, I think it's a great agreement and uh, just uh, well done to, to staff for uh, making it happen. So you've heard the recommendation. All in favor? That's carried. All right, that moves us on then to communications petitions, and there's two communications there. Are there any, anybody want to make any comments to either of those? I don't see any. Uh, there's the report of the department heads and one information report. I don't know, David, do you have any comments? Okay, uh, I'll the just CAO. Com yeah, I'll just comment, Mr. Mayor, that, that the clerk, uh, in response to, to uh, uh, some comments that Mr. Mann had made uh, at the public meeting uh, prepared the report. Um, I think it, it addresses the issues um, uh, that have been outlined in a uh, clear way that the expectations of the RFP um, did allow for the uh, proposal as, as uh, uh, submitted. Thank you. Any questions with regard to that? Seeing none, uh, then that brings us to the end of the agenda, and I guess we can uh, have announcements by members, and we can start with the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, um, it is sadness, with sadness, that I announced the passing of longtime doctor from Southampton, Dr. Mercer. He passed away on the weekend. Um, thoughts go to the family. I grew up with his son. Dr. Mercer was my family physician and delivered me, so he was a mainstay in Southampton for many, many years. Thank you for that. The Vice Deputy Mayor? Vice Deputy Mayor? Nothing? Oh, okay. Nothing this evening. Thank okay. You. Uh, Councilor Schreider? Uh, thank you. Just uh, two things. Just congrats to the uh, ladies and men's slow pitch leagues. Uh, they both hosted their playoff weekend um, in from August 20th to the 25th at our Ball Diamonds here. Um, they've, they've extended past a playoff weekend because we have a need for Ball Diamonds uh, and because we have uh, so many teams and players in both leagues. So uh, Ian McKay, uh, DeChambeau, and also Connor Yerth, I know that they, they put a lot of effort into that and it was a very successful weekend. Um, and that's all for tonight. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Yes, I would just like to take a moment to congratulate Dr. Don McCullough, who celebrated his retirement yesterday after an elaborate 40-year career in the medical profession. Uh, he will certainly be greatly missed as a physician. Uh, we wish him well in his retirement. Uh, I, I had a chance to stop by, and it was a very well-attended uh, celebration yesterday that I'm, I'm sure he enjoyed every moment of. <laughs> Uh, also, if I could just take a moment, uh, if you haven't heard already, we as a community are uh, working through nominations for Kraft Heinz Project Play. We've received to date 246 nominations, which albeit phenomenal, uh, with a thousand baseball players in our community, I know we can do better. Uh, we've set a goal of 500, and I'm hopeful that we can reach it by this weekend. So I challenge you to speak to five friends, family members today about submitting a nomination. Thank you. Very good. Councillor Grace. I have nothing this evening, thanks. Councillor Carr. Councillor Mayette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> yes, um, I'll just uh, talk a little bit about the Labor Day celebration. I had the honour this year of uh, marching in the parade uh, and, and delivering a message at the Unifor Family Education Centre on behalf of the Mayor and Council. And uh, I could say that we were, I was warmly received by many of the unions and uh, labor organizations in attendance, uh, not least of which was the Power Workers Union, the Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation, and, uh, and Buzz Hargrove, the former president, was there, and uh, it was a, a good time had by all. And, uh, and of course, the second event that uh, I attended, along with the mayor and uh, a couple of councillors, was the volunteer appreciation event at, at Denny's Dam, 
where not only was I there as a councillor, but there as a representative of the Lake Huron Fishing Club, and we were able to showcase some of the activities that the Lake Huron Fishing Club does uh, in that vicinity. Uh, operating and maintaining the fish ladder is one thing, and, uh, and that's one of the locations where we harvest uh, trout eggs in the spring of the year, and, uh, and it was great having all those people there, and it was really uh, a fun time, good time had by all. Yeah, thanks for that. And it's worth rethanking all of those volunteers a lot. It's amazing how many volunteers it takes to do all the things that we do as a municipality. We really rely heavily on volunteers and, uh, and on some amazing people and a huge attendance at that too of volunteers, which is great to see. So uh, thanks to them. I uh, Just two things for me beyond that. Uh, one, I was uh, attended the Marine Heritage Society's Volunteer Appreciation uh, late last week, uh, which is another huge group of volunteers who do incredible things, uh, running tours to the to the lighthouse uh, and uh, looking after the lighthouse and keepers quarters and pioneer park and all the things they do for us so that's a great organization and and well worth recognizing and the last thing is uh, yesterday i, I uh, had uh, the pleasure of attending the opening of the walk for parkinson's on uh, down at north shore park in port elgin which was also extremely well intended uh, attended and uh, raised over twenty two thousand dollars for parkinson's research and to support uh, uh, folks who uh, are afflicted with Parkinson's in our community and all over southwestern Ontario and so that's a great event and I wanted to thank the organizers of that as well so that's uh, the end of the committee of the whole I ask for a, uh, a a mover to adjourn what's that so it's moved by the deputy mayor second by councillor Schreider all in favor we are adjourned and we'll reconvene at uh, about half past the hour